you are a B2B service-based business owner and you are looking to gain more clients, create more impact and more revenue in your business, tune in to Amplify Your Marketing Message with Christine campbell Rappin. Every week, we're gonna take you through how to build an audience of buyers, mastering your marketing message and making offers that convert consistently. We'll see you all on the inside. I have a personal mission in the role of business, and that is to help the rise of the creators, people who are really heart-led, impact-driven, because truthfully, that is what the world needs to see the leadership shift that will truly make the difference and it'll answer the question we're all saying, which is, how do I connect, profitize, and live my purpose. And that's why I'm super excited to introduce you to our guest today. This is a fabulous woman that I met networking. And when she started to talk about her purpose, how she was helping, I was like, we have to go play together. So give a warm welcome to our guest today. This is Christy Rafino. I'm super excited to have you here. Welcome, welcome, welcome. You know, I'm just so excited to be here with you today, Christy, too. And I loved your little intro music there. That was fun. <laughs> you got to dance. Always got to yeah, dance. I know. I was like... <laughs> <laughs> what I love about Christy, as I said, her great energy and what she's all about. And it is about purpose. So let's just talk right at the beginning. Where do you feel the marketplace has this gap? And why do you think that purpose is such a big thing we're talking about? But we still need guides along the way in order to see the amplification of this big dream that we have. Yeah. So, you know, I, I, there's such a purpose is, it seems like such a simple word, but it is not simple at all. And I think so many people, um, at least from my perspective and meeting so many men, women throughout the last 20 years on my entrepreneurial journey, um, women are moving forward with two like missions, either to help somebody else fulfill their purpose or they think they're fulfilling their purpose and they just become a carbon copy of somebody else out there. And they haven't really kind of figured out who they are. So they just uh, kind of try to be who everybody else is. And honestly, you know, I live many, many years trying to make other people happy and trying to help other people accomplish their mission, thinking that someday, one day it would be my turn. And although that was super fulfilling, um, when I did start stepping out on my own and trying to figure out what my purpose was it wasn't an easy thing for me to do because i think i kind of lost myself so and i see that a lot with other uh, women that i kind of have conversations with or talk to they they kind of have lost themselves and there's a little bit of work that they need to do to kind of figure out what the right path is for them so they can be authentic and really make the biggest impact that they were designed to make i'm so glad you brought that elephant out into the room because this is one of the things i think is so heartbreaking to see in the marketplace because we're told all the time about purpose and it feels like it's this grand utopia and yet so many of us are going what's wrong with me because i yeah. can't find it and i feel like i've lost it and i feel like i've been left behind so i love that you talk about honestly a lot of us are lost in the quest for purpose and mm -hmm. yet we are still driven to not quit the field but to keep digging in and figuring it out because truthfully I love that you also say it's two things. It is not just the giving to help others find purpose, but there is a 100%, actually a thousand percent, let's just be clear, a thousand percent truth that you are entitled mm -hmm. and should be choosing to say, I get to do me. Yep. Yep. I mean, it goes back to the whole, the old story of, you know, when the plane goes down, you've got to put your life back mask on first. Otherwise you can't help your loved ones. And it's the same way in our life. I mean, I believe we're all created for a specific purpose. And until we own that, we're, we're really just kind of coasting around. We don't feel like we're uh, doing anything that is as meaningful as we could be doing. And then once we do figure it out and own it and step into it, everything just aligns with you and everything just becomes so much easier. And then you have that inner joy because you know every moment is being spent in the right direction. It also where you feel really start to feel connected. And I think that's one thing we are questing. Why is the quest for purpose so big? It's because we feel disconnected and we think the purpose that that we are one living being under under the sun mm -hmm. is, is really the truth that we are seeking. And when we do that, it's a journey. 
It's not a destination. I always say to people, I wouldn't know my purpose if I described it. I know when I live it. And you've got some great strategies about connecting into this, doing the work to find your story, how to use your story to build a brand, how to amplify your authority. And most importantly here is the world of business. We want you to amplify what you're doing and actually create some income out of it because Mm -hmm. good purpose felt business owners will do great things and create big ripples. And as everyone knows here on this podcast, I am all about the ripple. Let's see more of us succeed together. So where do we start on this journey when you're working with your clients? Oh, well, so I kind of have a, the framework that I take people on. And the first thing is just embracing your story. Um, I really believe that our story is what is going to lead us to fig- figure out what our purpose is. Um, and our story doesn't have to be something that is earth shattering. Like I, I, I died and came back to life. I mean, it doesn't have to be that it can be. And there are a lot of people that have uh, major tragedies that happen that put them on the trajectory of figuring out what their their mission is. But sometimes it's just those little messes that help us figure out what our mission is. And when we embrace our story and realize that it happened to us for a reason, and more importantly, share our story so we can connect with others and make them feel like they're not alone and, and make our ideal clients realize that, yeah, maybe we don't have a degree in this, but we have a life experience that cannot be replaced by a degree. And everything we learned on that journey is can be sometimes way more impactful if we, um, uh, you know, if we figure out how to share in a way that is going to really create transformations in others. You are so true. 100% the lived experience is what connects us. And so connection is the big theme I'm hearing from you. It's if you can connect to your story, if you can stand in the ownership of it doesn't have to be anything more than what I live to have impact, everything starts to move. That's the alignment piece. And I tell my clients, I tell people, you've heard this for sure on the show, the story you don't want to tell is actually the story that the world needs to hear. And It doesn't have to be traumatic. Chances are, though, there was a moment, a pivot, an impact of something that you had to work through. And that's the human story that will connect people to it. So I'm going to invite you in this brand new year to connect to the story you don't want to tell. And most importantly, share it from the lens, which I heard you say as well, from the lens of what did I learn from it? Yeah. Because the learning is what will others value not just living in that moment because we want to move past it. Movement is the journey and the evolution of life, right? Yeah, absolutely. Um, we do have different stories at different parts of our lives and figure out what story that we need to share at this moment um, in our business. It really is not about us. It's more about what story does our ideal client need to hear? Where are they struggling and what story can we share that will help them achieve their goal. We we don't want to be the hero. We want to be the guide that is going to help them get through their, their story faster and get through their, their struggles uh, a lot less, more, a lot less seamless, you know, um, and come out on the other side. And it's seeing that there is another story ending. And I think that's where the real power of purpose comes into play, because when you're living in a storm, the biggest challenge is that you can't see past sometimes the storm you're in. And stories show us that there is an alternate ending. And it's where the curiosity comes from. It's where the hope comes from. And certainly, I believe, I'd rather see us connect on hope than fear. Mm -hmm. And so leaning into this storytelling is the first piece of the puzzle. What happens after you start to decide, I am going to choose bravery, I'm going to choose impact, I'm going to think about what do they need, and start speaking my truth? What happens next? Yeah. So it's really funny. The process of getting your story out in the world is something that um, you don't recognize what happens until you actually do it. And sharing our story can be vulnerable. Um, And what happens is when you're able to like dig into your story and get it out there and, and just let the world know, it opens you up to writing your next better story. And it allows you to really Uh, get on a better path to figuring out your purpose. And so my next key is to profitize your purpose. 
And that is all about creating a business that can help people. And the only way that you can continue to help people is if you do get paid. Otherwise, you've got a very expensive hobby. Yes. Um, and we need to make sure that the revenue come in, is coming in so we can continue to help people. And so when I help people profitize their purpose, purpose, it's all about um, basically creating your methodology, your unique branded system um, that you can take people through that will get them from point A to point Z in a linear in linear fashion and you know have milestones along the way so they know they're making progress and there's just a lot of pieces to making sure that your um, your methodology your process is going to get them results but um, it's just really powerful when you realize, all right, I'm going to pursue this. I'm going to create a business to help people. And then you help your first client accomplish something amazing. And then you, then you kind of like, Ooh, this is going to work. I love this. And then you see how their life has changed uh, by how you've been able to support them. And then you realize that, Hey, I, this is my calling. I need to keep doing this and I need to keep making an impact in the lives of others. You know, I think this is so awesome because I think sometimes people get lost when they say, how do I profitize this? And mm -hmm. what you're thinking, as I hear you saying, is it's the system of the journey that you guide people through because people will only pay for one thing, not to hear your story, not to be inspired by what you accomplish, but by when they can put themselves in the driver's seat of the journey that you took. And it's the system that will say, oh, there's a path. Can you guide me? Because what they're looking for is the result. Result is everything. And if you don't have result-driven offers, result-driven businesses, guess what? You will struggle always to yeah. find clients. And that means you do have a really expensive hobby. And we'd love to see less hobbies that are meant to be businesses. Totally yeah. have your hobbies for hobby stake, but please don't ever go into business thinking this will create money if you don't have a system. And I love that, Christy, you work with people to help them figure out what is that repeatable pattern mm -hmm. that leads to result, because that's what confidence is built around. I love that. And, it, you know, money sometimes is not the main motivator for some of my clients. Uh, I work with people that have retired from very successful careers. Money is not their objective. Um, their goal is to really make an impact and they had a successful career but they just felt like there was still something missing mm -hmm. and so when you're able to um, kind of like just step into that design that purposeful design that you you know how you were created and what you were meant to do um, it isn't about money but money is definitely something that it's kind of like that reward for doing something that you know that hey this is right and i'm getting paid to support my belief around that. I always think to people, I 100% I, I love that you test it with that really again, same elephant in the room. It's like, people don't get out of bed for money. I mean, a lot of us think we need money. And a lot of us feel the lack of money and feel scarcity around money. But truthfully, there's millions of dollars to be made if money was your driver, get out of bed. Mm -hmm. truthfully it is everywhere. Mm -hmm. What really I always say to say to my clients is lead with the impact the legacy and the result because money will follow it. And when you do have wealth and that's money, friendships, community, faith, all those things, guess what happens? You get to give to others really generously. And it's a really fun part of the human experience is to give back. And I encourage everybody to be part of that. So know that there has to be a system in order to profitize your person. Per, your purpose. I want you to find your story. And so then what's the third key that we need in order to see the success and really have a lot of fun in the process. Okay, it is increase your impact with automations and systems. Um, I actually have four, four keys and the fourth one is uh, cash in on your connections. And that's when you have everything all done and then you align yourself with uh, other joint venture partners and people that are supporting you on the journey while you're supporting them. But I wanna go back to I, which is um, increase your impact. And the four tips actually spell out epic. Um, so uh, embrace your story, pursue your purpose, increase your impact, and cash in on your connections. Um, and with the I and in increase your impact, it is about taking that system that is duplicatable and honestly build it in a way that you can step away. Um, because we don't want to be the, and you may never step away from it, but if you build it in a way that you can have an exit plan, either sell it or have a team of people doing it. And you think that way every step of the way, create your 
SOPs, your standard operating procedures, create your system to have your automations in place, do everything that's going to maximize your time so you don't have to spend it doing things that you shouldn't and you can do the things that you should and you have people or processes in place that will do all the other little pieces that um, really you shouldn't be spending your time on. I love it. The mic drop that's rolling in my brain is treat your business like a business, peeps. Yep. Treat it like a business yeah. because without the systems, without that consistency of the high quality deliverable, you are in trouble. And that's when you start to feel disconnected and you also start to feel out of alignment of that big purpose. So you have freedom when yep. you have a repeatable plan in place and the goal is to have the life you want. Yeah. Yep. So it, simple and money, and it's a statement, right? And money, <laughs> it really, sometimes. money is something that can help you get freedom. Time freedom, money freedom, uh, the ability to uh, change your legacy, uh, not only for your family, but for others. Um, but yeah, so freedom, freedom is a great thing. And you can't have freedom if you are doing all of the pieces of your business. You have to treat it as if you're the CEO and have your team and your uh, systems and processes in place that um, you can kind of just make sure everything is running like a clock. I love that. So then the final piece, this is bonus guys, this is number four, and this is about the connection piece, because this is a really okay. interesting one too. Tell us about cashing into your connections, because <laughs> sometimes we get really caught up in that purpose is a solo journey. Yeah, well, so I started a women's networking organization 20 years ago. Um, and I did it because I was in a business that I needed to get clients. And that is when I learned the power of creating partnerships out there in the world. And, you know, as an introvert, networking was something that I did not like. It was scary to me, you know, talking to strangers that was so out of my comfort zone. Um, but what I did is I created a brought together really a team of women who were or were what I know now were joint venture partners. Um, we call them power partners, um, but they were the ones that got to know my business as time went on. I got to know their business. And then we were always making these natural connections. And so that is a key piece to your business is don't going out, don't go out there and think you have to do it alone. Um, even if you have a team in place, that's great, but you really need to focus on having uh, business associates that know your business really well and will have a light bulb moment when they're crossing paths with somebody that would be a good client for you. But more importantly, you are actively doing things for each other that will keep your business in front of their audience and vice versa. Um, it could be just as simple uh, as having um, like your newsletter with your partners on there um, where you're, you know, you're sharing information about each other's businesses in your emails, um, specific introductions. I mean, there's a lot of things that you can do that will allow you to have um, great joint ventures. One of the things I do is I actually have people that um, are embedded into my program that solve a problem that is not my area of expertise. Mm -hmm. um, and generally, when you're helping somebody on a journey, um, you they came to you because they have something else. And then once you're done with them, they have another problem. So if they're on this big journey and if you can bring people into your program that do things that you don't necessarily have the expertise, maybe you, you dabble in it, but if you can bring that expert in, now they're serving your clients better and then you become a service provider for their clients as well. And it's just a really amazing way to build a business with a team of people all supporting each other on really much the same journeys. I love it because that's a big concept that we talk about a lot here on the podcast, which is you get to be your own fuel source. The purpose really starts with you, but you yeah. don't have to be your only engine and you can have other people around you to support you on that journey. We get there together, but it is about understanding the connections because that is honestly, I think the biggest thing that lifts your business and makes play part of the day to day so mm -hmm. you can get in front of more people that you really want to do business with, you really want to do life with is yeah. to really think about using community that way. So one of the things I ask all of my guests is what's working right now in your business to amplify your message, to get your business moving? What's working right now, time and place? Ooh, so you mentioned AI earlier and I have not been involved with AI 
much in the last year. However, the last couple months, I've been playing with it more specifically around helping people uh, key in on their signature story. Um, and I have a framework that I've been using for about 10, 11 years now that helps my clients write their signature story. But now I'm utilizing uh, that framework and I've written a bunch of very specific prompts that will help clients get their story out a little easier. Um, of course, there's a little work that they have to do because your AI is not going to know your story. But if you share the bullet points of your journey, it will help you put it together in this amazing story arc. And that's one of the things I've been doing is, you know, leveraging AI to help my clients get their stories written faster, easier, and sometimes better. I love that. I love that you're leaning into this because there's ways to help boost the research, but you still mm -hmm. want to bring your A game, your special sauce, the piece that makes you human to the table. So Christy, I love what you do. And you know, I'm a big fan. So how do people find you? How do they connect you? Our master storyteller activator. Yeah. So um, my website, we've, I believe we've evolved so much over the years. I've got four websites right now, <laughs> but the main one is the, my mastery unleashed coaching um, that will bring you to our podcast. That will bring you to my main speaker site. That will bring you to our um, story star program where we help women get our stories out there. Women get their stories out there. Um, and so the master unleashed, uh, mastery unleashed coaching.com will be the main hub that will get you to any place you want, as well as it contains a ton of amazing free resources. Beautiful. Guys, we invite you to go connect to Christy. Go find out about what she's all about. This is such a timely message. Mm -hmm. It is about leaning in to profitize your purpose. There are three plus a bonus keys to get you there. Follow the roadmap and go amplify your marketing message. Thank you for being our guest today, Christy. Everyone go connect with her. We will see you all on our next episode. We'll see you soon. Bye-bye. That's a wrap on another amazing episode of Amplify Your Marketing Message with me, your host, Christine campbell Rappin. Be sure to subscribe on your favorite podcast platform so you don't miss another great episode. And be sure to visit christinecampbellrappin.com slash podcast to get a free resource on how to master your marketing message. We'll see you all on our next episode.